Europe. We visited a lot of places there, the castles and things. It's all fun, right? But why do we do it? Especially uh, when you think uh, hopping on a jet, flying to Italy to go see uh, a museum, as an example, right? Uh, you're paying not only for the transportation plus the pleasure of being crammed in a narrow metal tube uh, with about 200 other people uh, that are, you know, being flung across the universe. Probably uh, folding space. I don't know if the pilots are on spice or what. Uh, but once you once you get to the, the other end, you know, and you land, then you have to go through traffic and you're you know, if you're from here and you go to Rome and you discover, wait a minute, I thought traffic was, you know, five cars at a stoplight. No, there's traffic uh, in Rome. Uh, and, and you have to spend money to eat, you have to spend money to pee, you have to spend money to, to uh, stay in a, a hotel of some sort. Um, and heck, at, at my age, my wife wouldn't be able to do any of that walking anyway. Uh, so forget it. But if I'm home on the computer, I could go to the museum I want to see, and they've got all the pictures right there. I could just go and look at them that way. Why physically torture yourself by going to a place where you're liable to get sick from all the people? It's, I, I mean, just think about it. So, it just, it's kind of amazing, I, especially since I'm, I've got friends now that you know, once you're at a certain point, you have to take your 401k money out. You have to take your IRA out. This year, I'm going to have to start doing that, right? And all along, I've been wondering, you know, but what do you do with this when you do take it out? And so I asked one of my friends, and he, he kind of sadly said, well, you pay taxes and travel. And I don't want to do either of those two things, you know? So, so. <laughs> But Peter Slaughterdyke point, points out that this, this travel bug that we have is a cultural phenomenon. That, you know, people, I, I, how many folks have seen an RV with most of the states, like, painted onto the, the map, you know, with a few states missing, so you know that they're still planning on going there, even if it means dying, you know, because of... The heat. Yes. Hi, Bob. Topic, but I feel like you could write a pretty funny satirical piece about the resemblance between pilots and skilled navigators. That is an off topic. I I just mentioned spice. Well, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Kind of like, yeah. yeah. I, I, and I overheard you do have to worry about parts falling off your plane. Yeah. Probably not a good thing. Yeah, we've had a couple. couple oh, of, you were my conversation. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I wasn't I sneaking, I just was walking by, you know, but... A piece hanging by a thread. Well, I'm worried about the cowling. It's like, it needs to have an upgrade done to it, and it's like, not about the fall off, but it's one of those things in the back of your mind where it's like, this could happen. And if it did happen, it would be quite catastrophic. Yes. I've been on planes, military planes where I happened to know that the engine was off. One of the engines shut down. Oh, yeah. You know? Well, the nice thing about those planes is you have more than one engine. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, so it was like no big deal. You know, yeah. we're still still right on schedule, actually. No problem. Um, but Peter Slaughterdyke, his, his individual essays are interesting and pretty wide-ranging. In fact, uh, another interesting thing about Peter Slaughterdyke is that he used to be on TV. He was kind of like Jay Leno. Jay Leno? None of you know who Jay Leno was. Uh, John Stewart? He's a contemporary, right? Now he's back, right? John Stewart. There John Oliver? That's another one, right? Yeah, so there's these... He used to be like that on German TV. Let me see if I can. Oh, this should be fun. That's two hours. We're not going to watch the whole thing. Let me see if I can. Uh... Paragraph 344. 
from the gay science. The gay science was a book by Nietzsche. Even we. Uh, I think today you pious. could translate it the happy science. In a sense, with good reason that convictions have no civic rights in the domain of science. It is only when a conviction voluntarily condescends to the modesty of an hypothesis, a preliminary standpoint for experiment or a so you could tell there's no sword fights or duels or any boring TV, but there it is if, if you're interested. Um, but he used to have uh, German TV. Um, oh well. Presents Life and Letters, Dr. Zeitgeist, written by Thomas Meany, read by William de Merritt, who in 1788, he sent a sketch of the street plan back home as a possible template for the layout of Washington, D.C. The town is also the... Okay, so you get the idea. There's plenty of stuff out there. On him. Bruno Latour, let's talk about him for a minute. Am I boring you guys, or is this interesting? And some type of, ob some type of object, which in spite of the fact that they are in the whirlwind, actually float. And that's especially true of a barrel. I ask to be able to write on the blackboard, but my writing is awful, so don't try to read what I've written. The key point is that he stick to the barrel and he emerge unscathed from the maelstrom, in spite of the fact that the boat, his two brothers, and everything else has been sort of sucked by the uh, very powerful uh, maelstrom. So what I'm interested in doing with you today is, is sort of a detection. So we had a catastrophe, but we are very quiet, and we try to detect what the difference between those things which sink in and those things that float. So it's a slight difference. We have to do a sort of sorting mechanism and a trial so that we can detect what is disappearing very quickly. And what can float? This is what you cannot expect for more. As Anna Singh has said in his marvelous book on the mushroom at the end of the world, we live in the ruin. So don't expect to escape of a maelstrom, but try to get yourself tied and attached to what is not actually going to be sucked by the thing. Okay? He's talking about so global warming and the disasters that we're going to experience. Now things become simple and then more complicated. The simple thing is how do we detect what is the test which allows us to make the difference between what is sucked in and what is floating around. We have one orientation mechanism which we have been using for many years, which is the idea that there is something which we call a modernizing font or frontier which is the one I've studied for about 40 years, which behind it is basically archaism, and in front of it is something which is precisely the title of your lecture series, The Future, and something which, toward which we are supposed to move on, right? And the powerful feature of this modernizing font is that if you are here, you are, can be easily accused of sticking to the old ways of being archaic, of being passé, etc., etc. We have dozens of these little uh, words which allows us to sort of uh, organize and uh, sort of make a gradient between those who want to go back here and want those who are moving here, okay? The modernizing form. Now, it exists actually as... So, you get the idea. 
his English is okay. You can follow him, and he's done thing um, done things with uh, um, uh, various prizes. He's given the Edinburgh lectures and things. So he's he's been very popular and and um, involved in lots of things. Uh, all. So you get an idea. He did die um, also recently, October 22. Um, but so he's and his his main theme is Gaia. Uh, he talks about modeling and that the models that we've used uh, that talk about the whole Earth are misleading. What we really should do is talk about Gaia and Gaia for him. It's just a very narrow environment that's you know roughly three miles in depth around the surface of the earth because uh, we, we can't live 20 miles deep in the earth we can't you know up in space not really you know what we really need to protect and think about the fragility of is the very small biosphere uh, where we are able to live and how we can protect that uh, so Gaia is what he calls it uh, and he's primarily hoping uh, to improve, of course, the way we treat our Mother Earth, etc. Um, his uh, family made wine, and so he, he lived in an area of France where the, the grapes were like the main thing. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Bruno Latour. His writing, by the way, is rather difficult. Um, he's kind of tied in the sociological works. So he spends time, I, I remember reading him working with scientists on the, a mountaintop, doing an analysis of the life on the mountaintop. And the way he talks about it is, I suppose, kind of a, a, um, a new kind of scientific way of, of, of approaching it, where you're looking at the data and talking about it through various kinds of databases and things uh, where you're comparing them and so on uh, so you have to kind of get used to how he's working uh, when he's talking about that stuff um, another one now Amartya Sen is from India but he um, is known mostly as a professor at Harvard. Uh, so notice he's 90 years old. Um, and he writes uh, lots of different books. And his focus is on justice. One of his main books is The Idea of Justice. that I would especially associate with justice today is Martha Nussbaum. Uh, and remember, Martha Nussbaum is also considered an Aristotelian. Uh, so her focus was on Aristotle. But uh, Martha Sen is very interested in diversity, looking at justice from the, the, the standpoint of many different perspectives. So I'm, I'm not sure how he would talk about things right now, but I'm sure if he were looking at the situation and any of the hot points, he'd want us to think about the, the you know, justice of those situations from the perspective of all sides, not just uh, uh, whatever side maybe our news media is focused on, uh, but uh, but from all sides, and and the, the way that we can support the whole problem of being objective. You know, how can you be objective in a situation where there's multiple points of view, right? You know, when I, I talk about how value statements uh, can't be facts, because 
you know, I might think this cup is a good one, you might think it's a lousy one, right? Uh, with uh, think about electric cars. You know, people you know, talking about electric cars will save uh, us from burning carbon uh, you know, fuels and, and so on. But then on the other side, people point out, well, look how much earth you have to move in order to gather the kind of materials that will build the batteries, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So there's, there's all kinds of, of different points of view regarding whether or not electric cars would actually be a good, good thing or not. Right? Um, either way, I don't know if any of you have had experience with them here. I still don't think electric cars are a good idea in Alaska. Does that make sense? Um, there apparently are one or two of the new Tesla trucks here. I have never seen one up here. I don't know. Have you seen them? There's like two in Fairbanks. There are two in Fairbanks? Yeah, I, I didn't know where they were, but I don't know how well they're doing there. I think you have to keep them in the garage all winter. I don't know. Uh, what the heck? However, um, but that's just another example of, of points of view, you know, it's just, uh, even someone like Trump, you know, when we're thinking about uh, Trump uh, running against Biden again, and we've got this situation where politically, of course, there are folks, in fact, from what I understand, the polls show that Trump is actually slightly ahead of Biden, and, you, and you know, depending on your point of view, you might think, why would anyone vote for X, right? Well, you meet the people that vote for X and they can't figure out why on earth would you vote for Y? You know, because as far as they're concerned, you're the one that's dumb, you know, and, and you know, if you, you know enough about the situation, you realize that the policies of the one is, you know, the only sane way to go. <laughs> and uh, both sides are saying, you know, that Democracy is at risk. You know, we're not going to have a democracy anymore if so and so gets elected. Um, one of the 